Good morning, good morning, family. God bless you. Welcome back to the Morning Devo. I hope you had a great Labor Day weekend. From the time of this recording, we just finished Labor Day uh, weekend, and it means that it spells the last part of the summer season. Amen. Almost coming to an end. And then we're getting into fall and then winter. Amen. And just like that, that's how fast time is going, right? Seems like yesterday, summer just started, and now... um, to, you know, in a couple of days or it's official soon that um, summertime is over. That's how fast it happens, man. <laughs> so if you think that time is just waiting for you, um, like my uh, great uncle used to tell me, may his soul rest in peace. He used to always say, son, time waits for no one. And he's so right. Amen. And it's so true. As I get older, amen, I started realizing how true that is. Time is just flying by. Um, there's no time to waste. There's only time to cherish and really be grateful um, that God is doing what he's doing in your life and in my life during the time that we do have. Amen. So listen, we're on this thing or series or however you want to call it. God is not letting it go. And yet he wants us to know about lying, telling the truth, the benefits of telling the truth. And the consequences of lying. This one is called lies don't benefit. Say that real slow with me. Lies do not, don't benefit anyone. Doesn't benefit you, doesn't benefit me. We're going to be in, we're going to start in Psalms chapter 63, verse number 11 on today's Morning Devo. If you have any questions, comments, Concerns or any prayer requests, don't hesitate to leave it on the live chat. That's what we're here for. If this is your first time on the Morning Diva, welcome. Whether you're listening from soulwinnerswithaz.org or you're watching at live.soulwinnerswithaz.org or you're watching somewhere on um, social media through my YouTube or all the pages that are streaming right now, welcome. Um, We love first-time visitors. Um, Don't be a stranger after this, though. It's not a coincidence um, that you got onto our page. Amen. It's a divine appointment. God lines things up according to his will and his purpose for your life and for my life. Um, There's no accidents with the Lord. There's no um, coincidences with the Lord. Amen. Um, There's only connections that he wants to make between him and his people. Amen. And I'm glad you're here. So the morning Devo lies don't benefit Psalm 63. And 11, amen. Uh, let me just make sure I share this on to um, the website as well. Amen. Thank you so much for all the people who came through um, during this Labor Day weekend and checked me out on Celebrator Network. It was it was a lot of fun. It was a pleasure. Amen. And I'm humbled by that, that you would come through and check your brother out. Amen. And I see the numbers. Amen. They're encouraging. Um, usually, during this time, um, people start coming home from vacations or whatever like that and they start focusing more on the things of God and they get back to church and they start listening to ministries like mine and they get on Christian radio um, shows and all that stuff and I see the number already rising so that's all glory to God amen I hope the trend continues all throughout the year um, that our numbers will increase and we'll be back to where we were before I had to change over to this um, content delivery network that I'm on now Amen. Uh, years, a couple of years back, uh, we used to have twenty, thirty thousand, 30,000 uh, or 40,000 people, amen, in a week listening. Amen. We're striving to get back to that as we moved on to another content network. Amen. So let's go for it. Uh, let's share this out. But before we share this out, we're going to pray first. Amen. Let me just make sure I did this right. And we're good here. And the sound sounds okay. Make sure you let me know if you have any issues with sound or any issues like that. You can let me know in the live chat. Um, in the studio at this time of the morning, you already know it's a one-man band. Uh, no one's getting up this early with me to help me um, in the studio or to monitor anything for me in the studio. Um, so I'm relying on you, the people who are listening and watching, to let a brother know if there's any issues with sound, Okay. So it looks like we're good everywhere, podcast, radio, live stream, 
and also all the social media platforms. Amen. So let's pray. Father, I thank you so much that you told us the ultimate truth about your son, Jesus, that he came, um, virgin birth, lived a perfect life, died on the cross and rose again on the third day. The ultimate truth. And you are the ultimate truth teller. So we want to imitate your truth. We want to imitate imitate your life, Lord Jesus, of how you told the truth in love and that you have victory over death itself. And we are no longer bound to sin. We're no longer bound to the law of sin and death. And we are dead to sin and alive in Christ. That is the truth, Lord God. Thank you for your word, speaking truth, allowing us to know the truth. And making your truth available to all those whosoever's who call upon your name to be saved. I pray, Lord God, that you would touch our lives continuously. That we would know who you are in a profound way, in a strong and powerful way. And that, Holy Spirit, you would continue to teach and touch and reveal yourself. That we would find ourselves close and clean because of your word, because of your truth. We pray a hedge of protection right now, a hedge of protection, angelic hosts, angels of war that will guard God and protect me, my family, our studio, our organizations that we're a part of, and our businesses that we run. And I pray the same over every single person on the other side of the screen and on the other side of this mic, the power of God to really engulf your life. And the angel of the Lord that's assigned to all those who love you, Lord God, that that angel of the Lord will be on full alert. For the rest of our lives. And I pray, Lord God, I had your protection over my children, um, from the oldest to the very youngest, and everyone in between, my whole entire bloodline and the bloodlines that are represented on the other side of the screen and the other side of this mic. In Jesus' name, I pray this by faith. And all those who agree and know the power of prayer, we all say amen and amen. The power of prayer is available to all those who pray to the true God, the only true God, the living, loving, holy, righteous God, the Lord Jesus. So I'll be right back. Take 60 seconds with me. Help me share this out. When we come back, we'll dive right into Psalms chapter number 63, verse number 11. We're calling this one lies don't benefit today on the morning Devo. I'll be right back. Amen, amen. We're back. I'm all smiley today. I think I got good rest, even though it seemed like my mind never shut off. How many people know what that means when you're sleeping, your mind is still racing, and then you open your eyes and you're like, what time is it? That type of thing. Amen. I was so eager uh, to come to the studio and to get this word into our lives. Amen. So that way um, we could start our week off after this holiday weekend, if you didn't have to work yesterday from the time of this recording, amen, um, you have rest. I hope you experience rest. And we got ultimate rest. It's coming, right? We have rest in the Lord Jesus here on this side of eternity, and then we have eternal rest um, when we get to uh, the kingdom of God, which is the kingdom of heaven, um, and be with our Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus, for all eternity. But in the meantime, let's get to work. Let's get busy. Let's get our knowledge and wisdom right in the Word of God. So let me get this ready for the screens so that way you could know what we're all talking about here. And for those who are just listening, no worries. Although you can't see, um, by choice, you can't see what's on the screen because maybe you're driving, maybe you're jogging, working out. Amen. I love audio. Uh, if I if it was up to me, I'll do audio only. 
Um, but we're in a social media world, right? People want to see images and people want to see uh, talking heads for whatever reason. Amen. And I respect that just like I respect the people who just want to listen and watch um, and watch the video later at their own time if they want to. Amen. So it's your choice. Thank you either way for connecting with us over here at soulwinnerswithaz.org and Celebrate Network, Soul Winners Inc. as well. Amen. So let's put this on the screen. Don't. Lies don't benefit, so don't believe the hype, right? Um, that's one of those slogans that I grew up um, listening to. Don't believe the hype. Lies don't benefit. They don't. If you think about it, you'll know that to be true. The devil is a liar. How about that? That's the truth. God tells the truth, never lies. That's the truth. Right will always be right. Wrong will never always be wrong. Wrong will never be right. And right will never be wrong. That's the truth. So when you go along those lines and you see how beneficial telling the truth is, you'll know that the opposite applies. Lies don't benefit. Amen? Doesn't benefit anyone. Now, there's certain scenarios um, that come up when you think about lying. There's certain scenarios that God will judge, right? Um, we're not the judge of that. Um, but let's get to the scripture before we start talking about the scenarios. Psalm 63, verse number 11. But the king will rejoice in God. Everyone who swears by him, honoring the true God, acknowledging his authority and majesty, will glory for the mouths of those who speak lies will be Stopped. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. We know that the mouths of those who speak lies will be stopped. The mouths of those people who are talking trash about our Lord and our Savior, who mock him, who say he's immoral, that say his word is not true, that say that Christianity is false and phony, and that it's a cult. All those who speak lies will be stopped. Amen. But my prayer as a believer in Christ is that they would turn to the glorious, loving, holy, righteous God of heaven and earth, the triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, God, that they would stop and think about what they're saying. And when they realize what they're saying is not true, they will realize that lies are not benefiting them, but actually the God the God of heaven and earth comes against and stops those who speak lies. And the enemy of our souls wants us all to believe that there is no God. So it it's um it's not a mystery to me why people don't believe God. I know who's behind that that thought, that thought process, and that's the lying devil himself. He doesn't want people to know the truth of who God is, so therefore he has a lot of people deceived. And um, unfortunately, a lot of people believe his word over the word of God because he's a deceiver and he's been a liar since the beginning. The Bible says in him, there is no truth. He has no love in his soul or in his being for you and for me. He hates all of God's creation. So when people say there is no God and there's no evidence to stand the third, I know who they're listening to. I used to be one of those people who used to say, you know what? I know there's a God, but he's not for me. He's not in my life. He's not active in my life. So therefore, he doesn't exist for me. He's good for you. He, you know, that's your truth. I used to say those things. Amen. Um, postmodernism was my way of living without even knowing what postmodernism was, you know. And I didn't benefit from speaking that, talking that way, living that way. No benefits. Amen. At all, so I understood early in life that lies lies did not benefit my life. What about you? Amen. Here's another one. Here's another one. Psalms 24 verses three and four. Psalms 24 three and four. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in His holy place? These are questions. He who has clean hands. And a pure heart who does not lift up his soul to an idol or swear by what is false. When you believe in a lie, 
you are actually creating a God, an idol. Because now you're falsifying the truth. Amen? You're making what's untrue and you're trying to create it to be true. And you're trying to convince everybody else of that what you believe and what you're worshiping and what you're doing is true. And when people think about the truth, they think, right, in the back of the mind, they're thinking, well, that benefits me if that's true and that's false. I'd rather follow what's true than what's false. But in this world, haven't you noticed that people are going around falsifying the truth? People are going around saying what's good is bad and what's bad is good. People are going around saying that's your truth. That's not my truth. So live your truth. Speak your truth and leave us to our own truth. People are dividing. Um, we drew a, a line in the sand, right? And there's people on the side of truth and there are people on the other side of that truth. There's people who are saying that there is no God. There's people who are saying there is a God. As if, ladies and gentlemen, we decide if God is real or not. Can you imagine? Okay, there is no God. And millions of people say, oh yeah, there is no God. And they say, we knew we were right. And they walk away. Meanwhile, there's still God. There's still a God. People who are saying there is a God, I can't prove that the God of the scriptures, the Holy Bible, is the, the God that we believe in right now. But I know it by way of his spirit that's inside of me when I call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And then it made Holy Spirit available to live inside of every single believer on this planet. And we could testify of his love Testify of his mercy, testify of his truth in our lives, active in our lives, as we apply things in our lives. Amen. There's sirens going on around the studio. So we know that God is telling the truth when we experience his truth living through our lives. It's like no mystery. I don't have to make nothing up. And Take the weight off your shoulders if you're that type of person who really believes or thinks that you have to prove the existence of God. That's not our responsibility as believers in Christ to prove that there's a God. You know who does the convincing? Holy Spirit himself convinces people of who he is. God's an invisible God who makes himself known, who makes himself visible to those who are seeking wholeheartedly after truth. If you're seeking wholeheartedly after truth, you're going to have an encounter with the living God through the Lord Jesus. Amen. Guaranteed. Why? Because he is the truth. And in Jesus, there is no lie. He lived a perfect, sinless life on this planet, demonstrating his own love in this, that while people were still hating on God, he still, regardless, died for you and died for me. Go ahead and find another person, another leader another person who lived a sinless life, go ahead and try to find that person and let me know. People are going around saying lies that the gospel is a copy of an ancient civilization, this, that, and the third, and they had the same savior, same concept, same creation, and all this other stuff. If it was the same, then there wouldn't be any difference. Right? People always say, oh, it's the same thing. Um, Islam is the same as Christianity. It's the same thing. It's, they follow the same God. If it's the same, then it will be the same. But if you're honest, you know there's differences. So if something is different, it cannot be the same. It's common sense. Amen. I get on um, these TikTok lives and I help my brothers and sisters in Christ who are, you know, they, they had the platform for debate. Amen. Bless their souls. I used to do those debates too. But man, people come at you like, if if you're spewing out things that's going to annihilate society or civilization, and they it come with hate, hatred, come with false um, accusations, um, they try to quote scriptures way out of context, and then they attack our scriptures. So I'm in the chat with with those brothers and sisters trying to help them out with all the arrows that are being shot at them, and they're poised and in position. And um, people who are filled with Holy Spirit God, they're there taking the hits, knowing that we're not really being attacked. They don't really hate us, per se. A lot of times they don't even know us. They hate our God, who actually they don't know either. So I think it's built off of fear 
people are, are fearful of what they don't understand. I used to be that way too. I don't understand this, so therefore I'm, I'm afraid or angry about what I don't understand. And I'm lashing out at people who have this understanding and I don't have this understanding. People who are speaking truth and I'm speaking lies. I knew for deep down in my soul there had to be more to life than what I was currently experiencing. Then, so when I came to the last of my last, when the world used me up and I tried everything the world offered, right, that would make me successful here, that would make me uh, famous here, that would make me um, in the loop here. I said, man, I tried it all and I'm still empty, unsatisfied. There got to be more. The devil lied to me so much uh, that I found the truth. Amen. And I believe someone right now who's listening and someone right now who's watching, you've been lied to by the enemy for so long, all your life pretty much, right? That you know deep down inside there has to be a truth. There has to be more to life than what you're currently experiencing. And you you finally realize that lies don't benefit. You finally realize that one day liars' mouths will be shut. You finally realize that God doesn't want you to swear by idols. He wants you to know who he is. He doesn't want you to follow after idols. He don't want you to follow after gurus. He don't want you to follow ring popular preachers all around the world because they have some kind of anointing on them. He wants you to know the truth of who he is, what he did for you, and what he did for all the eternal uh, world, for all eternity, once for all, through what the Lord Jesus did. To find out the truth by looking at Jesus. Amen? That's good news. That's real good news. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 13. An evil man is trapped by his sinful talk, but a righteous man escapes trouble. And how do we escape trouble? As a righteous person, we speak truth. And that way we escape the lies. If we babbled and babbled and babbled about lies, right? What do you think the result will be? In our lives. Do you think people will follow. After me. If I'm consistently lying. And then I'm getting caught. And tripped up over these lies. Amen. Or do you think people who are lying. Right now. To people. Have a great following. Because. They're telling the truth. No. For whatever reason. And this is for every person. I believe. Every person who's a human. um, Our fleshly thoughts. And our fleshly attitudes. And our natural Ways kind of tend to follow things that are destructive. In other words, if something is bad on social media, you look at the numbers and be like, wow, 2.9 million people viewed this bad video. And then um, when you're scrolling, 10 people only, you know, acknowledge this good person in this good situation. Why is that? Why do you think? I think it's because uh, unsaved or un transformed person who doesn't know the truth is searching for the truth in every which way they can and popular opinion especially on social media if it's more views than that person or that event or that thing is true and if it's less views that person or that event or that situation is a lie that's not the way the kingdom of god works that's not the way the word of god speaks about about truth truth is revealed in a person And that person is the Lord Jesus Christ. Truth is revealed in God, Yahweh, the Father. Truth is revealed in Holy Spirit, God. Amen. Truth truth is revealed. It's just that the problem is a lot of people are not seeking truth anymore. They're They're seeking happiness, pleasure, right? Sinful lives are pleasurable for a season. And when that season is over, the consequences of the sins, the lies, um, the attitudes, the destructive ways, those consequences pop up. And then you're going to be like, man, I should not have went that way. Or how did I get this far away from God? Like so many people say, say, I used to be a Christian, whatever that means. I don't know what I used to be a Christian is. I think what you're saying is I used to attend church and I had a religious experience Um, But I never knew Jesus. I think that's what you're really saying. That's the truth. But people who are saying, let's just go down that road for a minute. I used to be a Christian. I read the Bible from cover to cover, which 
I honestly think if you read the Bible from cover to cover and then you're still saying it's all a lie, I don't think you're telling the truth. But anyway, I read the Bible from cover to cover. I used to be a Christian, this, that, and the third. And I realized that Jesus is not God and this, that, and the third. We came to a conclusion based on what you wanted to do. You already had the conclusion deep in your heart that you didn't want to follow any God. You wanted to be your own God. You wanted a controllable God, a controllable scripture. You wanted to do what you wanted to do um, by yourself anyway. In other words, you never wanted the truth. That's how I think about people who say that. I don't say that disrespectfully. I say that with the utmost respect. I used to be like that. I used to keep everybody who was telling me the truth or speaking the gospel to me, I used to keep them at arm's length. I used to realize, hey, that's good. Makes sense. But it's not for me. That's the way I was. Amen. Until God found me where I was to take me to where he is. I was lost. God found me. I was in darkness. God transferred me from his, from my darkness into his marvelous light. I was full of sin, uncontrollable sin. Now I'm dead to sin because of what Jesus did in my life. So the truth and the lies are always being presented. The truth of God is always being presented. The lies of the enemy, the pride of lies, the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the devil, always competing against the one truth. Someone asked me yesterday when we was on that debate on TikTok, how do you know um, that your religion is the true religion? Have you studied all religions? And I was like, as honest as I could be, as honest as I could be, I told the person through the chat, said, I don't have enough time in a whole lifetime to study all religions and compare all religions to my um, Christ. Amen? I said, neither do you. So we have to make a choice. There's only two ways you could think about it. All religions say that either God is Jesus and all the other religions say that um, Jesus is not God. Christianity says that Christ Jesus is God and every other religion, schism, whatever you want to talk about, says that he's not. So based on those two, one has to be truth and one has to be a lie. I don't have to go through every religion to realize that whether or not people who are Christ followers, who are filled with the indwelling spirit of the Lord, amen, we can testify of his goodness, his grace, his mercy, his power, his transformation, power, his salvation power, amen. We could testify of his signs, miracles, and wonders. And every religion outside of Christ followers says that it's not true. So why would I have to study every single religion in the planet to come to that conclusion? Lies don't benefit. The truth will set you free. Amen. So thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you get what I'm trying to say. Take time today. Read Psalm 63, the whole chapter. And I hope your day goes According to the power of God in your life, working through your life. So God bless you all. God keep you all. And remember always that God is good. Peace.